Thank you, Stephen. How many people here have seen the film Groundhog Day? For those who haven't seen it, um, Bill Murray plays a TV presenter who basically relives the same day, day after day, the same events, the same outcomes. Is your business, is Groundhog Day invested in your business? Are you going through the same old processes, the same routines, deriving the same results? To maximise short-term profitability, you have to step back and work on your business. Don't get embedded in the business, step back and work on it. I'm going to be covering five profit initiatives today. I'm going to encourage you to embrace the initiatives, be open-minded in challenging your business, engage energetically members of your team, and ultimately motivate you to take action. Don't let your business have Groundhog Day embedded in it. Before I focus on the first area, I'd just like to introduce you to William and Larry, two fictional businessmen. Any resemblance to anyone in the audience is totally unintended. <laughs> this is William. William's open-minded to new ideas, to new business initiatives. He's also receptive to independent advice. Conversely, Larry believes he knows all there is to know about profit initiatives. He's not receptive to new ideas, and he's certainly not receptive to independent advice. Let's see how they fare for our presentation. The first area I want to focus on is maximising sales to existing customers. In our view, there are three key steps to maximising sales to existing customers. Is your business just a provider of a product and service? Do you just respond to customers' requests? Are you just processing orders? <coughs> or are you a solutions-led supplier? If you are just a provider of a supplier, a product or service, and just respond to customers' needs, as and when processing orders, potentially your customer is at risk because it's a price-based decision. If you are solutions-led as a supplier and you really understand what your customers' needs are and become a solutions-led supplier, you will enable yourself to maximise sales to your existing customers. This underpins the ability to maximise sales. Step number two, sales gap analysis. What do I mean by that? This is the first profit initiative. Selling more of your existing products to your existing customers. The sales gap analysis, simply take your existing customer base and drop it into a spreadsheet. List all of your customers down the left hand side of the spreadsheet, profiling your customers from highest turnover to lowest turnover. In the example here, customer number one, highest turnover, customer number 300, lowest turnover. Across the top of the spreadsheet in each of the columns, profile your product and service lines by category, and then literally on a line by line basis for each customer, profile what they're currently buying from you, and more importantly, conversely, what they're not buying from you. If you haven't been meeting with your customers being solutions-led, then in the far right-hand side of the spreadsheet where we've got sales activity plan, please make a note against each customer. Go and meet with them. Meet with them sooner rather than later, so you really understand their needs, and you're then in a position to supply a broader range of solutions. In our experience, Pareto's law exists in most owner-managed businesses, such that 80% of revenue is often made up from just 20% of customers. Does that sound familiar? What that means is that you're often missing hidden gems, 
further down your customer base. In my example, the top 20% means that probably the top 50 customers are getting all of the attention. And the other 250 customers are probably frankly being ignored. There is huge untapped opportunity to drive sales activity and enhance profitability. Because in our experience, owner-managed businesses are not doing this exercise. In our, one of the case studies that we've been working on, uh, a client of ours undertook this exercise and was staggered by the results. So much so that customers sitting as low as 200 and below suddenly leapt up the rankings really quickly and were firmly embedded in the top 20% in a number of months. This is really a huge opportunity to drive sales and profitability. If this is something you've never done or something you haven't done recently, I strongly urge you to go away and do it. Profit initiative number two. Sell, naturally extend your product and service offering and sell more of those products to your existing customers. If you are a solutions-led supplier, and in my example, we had for profit initiative number one, we had four products and service lines. If when you're brainstorming with your customers and meeting and identifying there's a broader range of needs, it's much easier for you to make informed decisions about what products and services you should be naturally extending your range of. Again, a really effective way to drive short-term sales and profitability. To bring this to life, a case study, we were working with an IT business, initially was selling hardware, high volume, low margin. We challenged them to broaden their offering and they started to provide a range of software uh, sales to their customers. And around this time, they did start to engage with their customers in a much more energetic manner and really drive out, tease out what the customers' needs were. They naturally strayed into delivering consultancy services. The icing on the cake for this business was they started to sell annual maintenance contracts. Repeat revenue streams, driving profitability, but also increasing the value of their business. Repeat revenue streams in a business is very attractive to a potential buyer. <coughs> Profit initiative number three. Sorry, just to go back on that last slide. The observation I'd make here is not only if you can maximise sales to your existing customers, and there's huge opportunities to do so in most owner managed businesses, you're driving sales, you're driving profitability. However, if you don't undertake that exercise, for example, looking at the sales gap analysis, if your customer has got a need and you don't identify it, you are leaving your door wide open for your competitor to come and generate those sales and pinch your customers. So your customer base is at risk if you really don't understand what your customer's needs are. In some instances, they don't know themselves. So engaging them in that manner can be really effective and helpful for them. Profit initiative number three, sell existing products to new ideal customers. In our experience, owner managers go into business because they're really good at what they do. For example, if I was really good at <coughs> cups and saucers, which I'm not, but I assume I was, um, that's what I know. That is why I've gone into business. Frankly, when my business is in frantic mode for the first 12 to 24 months, I'll sell those cups and saucers to anyone who will buy them. Following that process through, over a period of time, my customer base is far from ideal. And it's not uncommon for us to look at a business's <coughs> customer base and see that the ideal customers within that business are far, it is an absolute minority of the overall customer base. The exercise I would strongly urge you to go away and undertake is to sit down, engage members of your sales team, your operations team, and brainstorm the criteria for what an ideal customer is for your business. If you've got more than one business division, 
with different target markets, do the exercise for each separate division. Right, agree and list the criteria with all of those teams. Relate it back to your existing customer base to bring it to life. Who is an existing ideal customer within your business? How did you win them? What relationship do you have with them now? Can you repeat the experience of how you won them? And look at other insights, other groupings in terms of you know, the type of business they are business sector, geographical location, the type of requirements that they and demands they put on your business. Also, conversely, look at those customers which are far from ideal. Can you move or influence those far from ideal customers to make them ideal? If not, be brave and get rid of them. If they're draining money out of your business, and tying up valuable time, be brave and get rid of them. Focus on putting a list of target ideal customers together and energising your sales and marketing resource and team to focus on maximising winning new ideal customers going forward. Over a period of time, the intention would be to shift your customer base away from being far from ideal and build on ideal customers. Make your customer base look much more attractive. Over a period of time, if your business has substantially more ideal customers than when you started this exercise and initiative, one, you would have driven sales and profitability, but also your business would have built in capital value. A business, if we were looking at comparable businesses, um, the before and after, we clearly would be much more interested than the business which had more ideal customers. To bring this to life, we've been, this is very current, we've been working with the business, it turns over about four and a half million, um, it makes just over 200,000 pound profit. The sales team were trying to introduce new business and the operations teams having none of it. No, we don't want that type of work. It got really, <coughs> and they asked me to come in, thanks. We worked with the sales team and the operations team and the manage managing director in this instance, and we brainstormed the criteria of an ideal customer for that business. We eventually, after some heated exchanges, agreed on the criteria. We related it to their existing customer base, which brought it to life. There were huge amounts of insights that we were able to draw from going through that exercise. And it gave all of the people involved in that discussion a lot more insight into their business than they had achieved for a long time. We then put together a list of target ideal customers for them. We energised their sales and marketing activity to maximise the chance they would win those ideal customers going forward. In the last quarter, that business has won seven new ideal customers with an annual increase in turnover of £700,000. That business had the capacity to deal with that increased revenue. So whatever gross profit they make is going to cascade down pretty much to profit before tax. Their profits have in fact doubled as a result. 15% increase in annual turnover, 100% increase in profit. Seems simple, doesn't it? It was hostile, I have to add. The benefit of independent challenge in this particular initiative, um, I don't think they would have driven out the results. I think it would have ended up in um, bloodshed, really. Um, so our, the independent challenge here is extremely valuable. Problem initiative number four cost reviews. In the current climate, it's a buyer's market. I'm sure we are all challenging our suppliers to get the best price on a regular basis. So we should be. Making sure that timeliness and quality of delivery uh, isn't diminished. The 
cost reviews for us is all about challenging the cost benefit of the spend incurred. So again, an exercise I'd encourage you to go away and do is to really focus on your profit and loss account, the overheads that you're spending. Sit down, brainstorm it as a team, seriously challenge line by line what you're spending and the benefit that you are deriving. Challenge each other in a way that you haven't done with that level of focus. Focus on the cost benefit. It shouldn't always be about cutting prices. In some instances, if you, if you are deriving really good benefits out of spending particular uh, amounts of money, for example, if you had a really positive sales initiative, why wouldn't you want to spend more to achieve more? The other thing you need to be really careful of in the current climate is that there will come a point where your business shrinks too far because you're cost cutting and it's not easy to respond to business opportunities. So be mindful of not shrinking your business too far. This leads me on to profit initiative number five. What is the biggest cost other than purchases in your business? Staff. Staff. What is the best asset you might have in your business? What do you think is the area where the least cost benefit is derived in an owner managed business? <laughs> in our experience, coming back to my example where I've gone into business about manufacturing cups and saucers, that's why I've gone into business. It's not easy for me to develop the expertise to make sure that I'm maximising value from the staff on a daily, weekly and monthly basis. It's challenging to be able to drive absolute but they're absolutely right in each member of the staff. Does your business, within your business, do your, does each member of staff within your team know exactly, without question, the two or three key tasks you want them to undertake? And do they understand, without question, how they are being benchmarked? Do you have daily benchmarks and weekly benchmarks for every member of your team? Looking at it from the top down, does your company as a whole have an overall strategy? Is that well communicated to everybody within the organisation? Does the company have key performance indicators which underpins that strategy? Is that cascaded down into each business area so that the key performance indicators are clear for each business area? And does that, more importantly, cascade down to each individual. <coughs> so they can see quite clearly where they sit within the organisation, what their targets are, and more importantly, how they're going to be benchmarked. To be challenging, if that infrastructure is not within an owner-managed business, you will not maximise the value from each member of your team. That can be achieved in a relatively short, short space of time and fairly clean through. However, it does probably mean that most of the people in this room will have to change. We are creatures of habit. We know what we know. And this is one area where, again, independent challenge can drive out significant results. I, can't, I don't have time to talk you through case studies now, but we do have clients who are driving performance out of their staff and really understanding why they're doing it and the benefits that they're, they're getting are flowed, driven up against a, a firm strategy. In this particular area, if you'd like to have a follow-up conversation, I will be around in the break. Uh, also, Ben Francis, who heads our HR consultancy team, is here. Again, please speak to him. We've collectively identified it's the biggest overhead, and I think it's probably the area where we get the least return. So please go away and focus on it. In summary, the first two profit initiatives are all about maximising the sales from existing customers. To do that, it has to be underpinned by really understanding what your customers' needs are. You have to be solutions-led. If you're not, you are just a supplier of a product or service. 
And it sounds simple, but you, your customers are at risk. It's a mindset, and it can easily be changed. Undertake the sales gap analysis. That should drive activity within, within your business. Huge opportunity. We've seen massive untapped opportunity further down customer bases within businesses. Look at what other products and services you can then also sell, extend your range to your existing customers. You've already got the goodwill built up with them. Make the most of it. Brainstorm with your sales and operations team. Who is an ideal customer for your business? Bring it to life. Relate it to your existing customer base. Look at those, contrast that with those who are far from ideal. Be brave. If they're never going to be an ideal customer, and they're just a business drainer, get rid of them. Let them go and drain money from someone else. Look at the cost-benefit review, <coughs> line by line, overhead by overhead. Challenge the cost-benefit. We've identified the biggest overhead within the business, and arguably the one where we derive the least return. Maximise value from staff. We looked at that infrastructure. There's no reason, if that isn't in your business, that can be put in there and relatively quick. Ultimately, please take these initiatives, step back and work on your business. Let's check in on William and Larry. William has implemented all of these profit initiatives and generated significant value for his business. Larry, well, he's definitely got groundhog day within his business. He's going through the same old routine and getting the same results. Please be like me, not Larry.